Hi, welcome to this day, today's end vlog. A uh, little change of scenery. I'm not in my office today, I'm outside. Uh, I thought uh, I'd take advantage of the fact that it's not as hot today as it used to be. There was a, a thunderstorm coming this morning and it cooled down a little. So yeah, now we can go outside. It's much nicer scenery than my little office. So, well, walk with me. Alright, um, that's the place where I am right now. Uh, I live very close to the Jura Mountains, so I just take a couple of steps outside and I'm surrounded by nature. Today I want to talk to you about a very controversial topic and uh, it's the question about is it okay to keep exotic ants? And I'm well aware that I might lose some subscribers by talking about the topic because it's a very heated discussion right now. I just want to share a couple of thoughts about it while being on this walk. Yeah, I need to talk about other YouTubers for a moment, uh, especially one. There's one YouTuber, it's called Ants Canada. He's probably the most popular, no, it's not probably, he's surely the most popular ant keeper. He has almost 3 million subscribers at the time I make this video. Um, and I, you know, I'm extremely thankful for what he does because he made ant keeping extremely popular. A lot of ant keepers nowadays are ant keepers because of him. Got interested in the hobby because of him, so uh, he's doing a, a great service to the ant keeping community. Um, and he made a video about it once, about the same topic, you know, about is it okay to keep exotic ants? And uh, he took a clear stand, and I respect his his uh, position, I respect his opinion, I have no problem with it, but uh, I still think that this video was a little bit harmful, uh, especially because of one, uh, because of um, the way he, he talked about the controvers controversy, you know. I think uh, since that video, since the video has been made, there are far more ant keepers who have a black and white uh, belief when it comes to this topic. Either you're for it or you're against it. And uh, and he, he drew that picture that it was it's really a black and white question. Either you for and keep uh, for you're for it or against it. And I believe that's a little bit a problem because honestly I don't believe that's true. And but what we see in the ant keeping community right now, because a lot of ant keepers nowadays are actually ant keepers because of the video he made. Uh, they know this video and they came into the ant keeping community already believing that this, there's a hu huge controversy going on and everyone is fighting about it and they Because they believed in that Actually those fights started to happen. you know, of course there was I don't say that there was no controversy before it, but it was not as as heated as it is nowadays um, But anyway back to my opinion uh, by the way as you can see, ants are flying right now. There's a queen. As you can see, there's a. That's just. And she gets attacked by an ordinary ant. Um, Alright. Something I didn't expect. So they are flying right now. So if you're looking for queen ants, now is the time to go and catch them. Actually, I'll leave her be. Now she's still being attacked by this other ant. Anyway, let's get back to the topic. Um, sorry for the disruption. So yeah, uh, well, you probably want to know my opinion about it. And my opinion is, uh, I believe, it can be okay under certain circumstances. Uh, I don't recommend keeping ant, uh, exotic ants for everybody, but it can be okay. I believe it's okay under certain circumstances if certain conditions are met. And I believe those conditions, are, I will just go through them point by point. And uh, afterwards I will also say a couple of things about uh, the arguments of people who believe it's never okay to keep keep exotic ants. I want to say something about that as well. Anyway, uh, well, disruption again. 
as you can see here, there has been ants working a lot. There have been ants working. You can see a lot of sawdust. This is the work of probably Campanotus ants. Okay, back to the topic. All right, the conditions that have to be met for keeping exotic ants. First of all, I believe if you're a beginner, I wouldn't recommend you, or, or inexperienced ant keeper, I wouldn't recommend keeping exotic ants as a start. Start with local ants, with local ant species. Um, they are much easier to keep and you will have less problems with them. Also, uh, I think it's just it's just essential to get experience before you keep exotic ants because uh, there are a number of reasons for that. Exotic ants are harder to keep because you have to uh, care for more. You know, you have to not only have you have to feed them and care for them. You also have to set an env environment that simulates the environment they or originally live in. It's just much harder to do. Uh, plus, and then the other point is also, if you're inexperienced, very often, uh, if you if you're new into ant keeping, after a year or so, uh, you realize that maybe it's not what you expected, or uh, um, yeah, things may change. So, so it's better to start with local ants uh, that are easier to keep, even even later. So. Uh, you know, not as much work, and 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 you can. It's easy. It's not as easy to get demotivated. And the other thing is also, you know, uh, the consequences if your ants escape uh, are not as, as severe with local ants. And it's great to get your experience also, you know, how to prevent escapes of ants with local species first before you have exotic ants. So that's the first condition I believe has to be met. Not, not, you have already have to have some experience with ant keeping. Um, yeah, second condition. Well, before I go to the second condition, I need to show you this. Okay, this is the lake I live at. Beautiful lake. And over there you can see the city. I live in. Uh, I'm I'm really blessed to live here. You know, it's, Switzerland is such a beautiful country, and uh, it's not all mountains. You can you cannot see the mountains. Well, at least not, not really well. They're in at the horizon. Uh, this is the northern part of Switzerland, uh, right at the foot of the Jura Hills. Some people call those mountains as well, but uh, we, Swiss, we Swiss people don't really consider them mountains. And but it's beautiful living here, and it's a privilege to live in such a beautiful country, and also keep ants in such a beautiful country. Anyway, uh, the second condition that have to be met: do your research. Uh, if you want to keep exotic ants, you need to do a lot of research, and to ensure that you actually can care for them, that you have the tools needed, the tools necessary to care for them, uh, to, that you have everything that you. Uh, that you can actually create the environment they need and yeah do your research a lot of research Le read reports about of other ant keepers who kept the same species find everything out that you can find out about this this uh, species so you're well informed and well prepared uh, third condition that has to be met i just wouldn't recommend keeping ants that have a chance of surviving in the in, in your area, in your climate zone. So don't keep ants that have a chance of surviving if they manage to escape in the unlikely scenario that, that they can that have a chance to become an invasive species in your country and in your climate zone. So keep ants that, uh, that don't really have a chance to survive in your climate zone. And the last condition that have to be met, be careful where you, where you get those, those uh, exotic ants. Um, only buy them from uh, sellers with, with a license that you trust, because uh, there's a lot of uh, shady uh, sellers out there. There are a lot of sh shady sellers out there that, uh, yeah, just because ant keeping became more popular, there's actually a, <laughs> People starting to smuggling ants, and those people don't care for ants at all. They just care for money. And uh, first of all, in most countries, it's illegal to import ants without a proper license, and you don't want to support that. And the other thing is also, you know, those people don't really care for ants. So very often, those ants are in bad condition. A lot of ants die because of them, and that's something you don't want to support either. So I'm gonna turn around, take another way because getting into the forest here and I think it's too dark to film in the forest. 
anyway, those I, I believe those are the conditions that have to be met if you want to keep exotic ants. And if you meet all those conditions, I believe it's okay to keep exotic ants. Uh, you have to be well aware that there will be much more work coming towards you than keeping local species. So. Uh, don't keep it. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend you to keep like dozens of exotic ant species unless you really have the time and uh, for it and are willing to give all the effort that is needed to do so. Um, I personally, uh, I do keep. I do have one colony of exotic ants. I have a colony of Atlas ants, leaf cutter ants, but all the other colonies I have are local species. Actually, species. Uh, there are actually ants that I queens that I caught myself on nuptial flights so uh, <laughs> in my opinion one one exotic colony for me for me at least is enough anyway uh, about the argument of, of why it's not okay to keep exotic ants you know the I think the basics of it is that people are afraid of uh, invasive species that and there are a lot of stories of invasive species fire ants in uh, in the states for example or australia um, arch ten, arch ten ants in europe and uh, pharaoh ants and others other species that, that do a lot of harm and because people are afraid that something like that could happen again uh, they are based they are very often against uh, against keeping exotic ants at all but uh, but I honestly believe if you meet all those conditions, the chances that you import an invasive species is extremely small, extremely slim. Uh, and the thing is, for example, if you live in a temperate climate zone like I do in Switzerland or something like, or a country like that, uh, and you eat exotic fruits like bananas or oranges or something like that, uh, you probably have imported invasive species already. I'm not saying that as an excuse, but uh, the chances that you import invasive uh, species, or if you to import exotic uh, uh, insects, is just huge. Because if you eat exotic fruits, if you have plants in your in your in your house, exotic plants that are not native to your country, all those things, you know. Um, if you if you really want to go through with the argument, you have to stop eating uh, exotic fruits. You have to stop importing exotic plants. You have to store stay, <laughs> basically even you know wearing clothes that have not been made in your country have the potential to uh, be shipped in boxes where there are exotic insects in it, and and those are not contro in a controlled environment. So uh, if an exotic animal gets imported in a in a box filled with bananas, uh, nobody's making sure they can't escape you know uh, so to me honestly it seems a little bit hypocritical if you say uh, don't ha don't keep exotic animals but at the same time you eat bananas in a country where there <laughs> where you don't have any bananas um, I'm well aware that people who, who, who are who are very very uh, have a very strong opinion on this will probably not let that argument go through but I think one of the big problems we have is, right now is the heated discussion because uh, because of that heated discussion because of that fights and so on people don't really think about it you know uh, what conditions have to be met to keep exotic ants they just think either I'm for it or I'm against it and if I'm, ag I'm for it then I, it's okay I just buy them uh, I don't think about the, the the, the consequences and I believe there are consequences all right I stopped talking for a moment because uh, there were people coming towards me and it's always a little bit awkward if I just talk to myself so uh, I'm back and what I want to say you know actually to finish the whole discussion is uh, what what I believe the, the big problem with the whole controversy is, is the controversy itself because people are uh, so much uh, believe so much that there's just a black and white solution there's just either you're for it or you're against it there's no real discussion going on anymore or uh, at any time there's a discussion going on it's heated uh, people don't talk about what conditions have to be met to keep exotic ants they just talk about if it's okay or if it's not okay and uh, it tears the it also tears the ant keeping community apart, and uh, I don't think that's a good thing. So um, yeah, my my opinion is that there's a middle way. I believe honestly, I, I I wouldn't say it's just okay to keep exotic ants for anybody. I wouldn't say that it's not okay to keep exotic ants 
uh, I just believe that there are, have to be certain conditions have to be met to keep them. Anyway, I hope uh, you are not offended by my opinion. And uh, yeah, that's that's it for now. If you liked the video, give a like. If you don't like it, give a dislike. Probably there will be some dislikes on this video. Um, yeah, if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe. And I hope you didn't get seasick from this video because I didn't have the gimbal with me. Just carry the camera around. Uh, and yeah, with this beautiful view we have here right now, I finished that video. As you can see the lake again. Uh, yeah, again, amazing. You know, there are people coming all over, from all over the world to have to do to, for holidays to my country, to also to this place, and I have the privilege to live here. The city is called Beal, um, the, it's the lake of Beal, or the, yeah, and it's beautiful. The sun has set maybe an hour ago or something like that, half an hour ago, behind those hills. It's just beautiful, beautiful place to be, to live. And there are a lot of ants as well, so yeah, see you around.